Marie Fout Show. Start me, Marie Fout. Girl, you better let him know. Oh, tears on the track. This is an introduction. Let me blow your mind. Let me blow your mind. And yes, I'm all bad, and I do it all the time. She does it all the time. Put your booty on the floor up in the chair, ground it in the air. Just don't go nowhere. Cause everything I do, I'm entertaining you. creatives get a bad rap. Either we're too sexy or we're too bold. We never get the opportunities like our male counterparts get. I came across a gem, a unicorn, a black unicorn at that, a black female DJ, Brie OG Mafia. This girl, this girl right here definitely shows what it means to make the struggle look real and beautiful all at the same time. She started her career off in 2015, where she started her radio career and her own mafia management company, where she has not one, but two artists under her belt, like Trilla K, who happens to also be a female DJ. And along her journey, she is a huge advocate for minority creatives and them stepping out on their dreams. And anybody who's there to make the scene, I'm here for you to sit on down and for us to have a conversation. Check on this episode with Brie OG Mafia on the Marie Fountain Show. <laughs> we are gonna get into this Q&A about how she got started in DJing. So start with that, Brie. I'm you. so excited I'm you're so here. I'm so excited too, I'm thank so you so much. I'm so excited that you're here. <laughs> I, I just can't hide it, man. But tell me, what got you started in DJing? Um, so pretty much my uncle, he's like 10 years older than me. Mm -hmm. uh, he started DJing first and okay. I had like a computer, different sides of the family. Yeah. Um, my grandparents gifted me a computer and he came to me and said, hey, like if you let me use LimeWire on your computer, I'll teach you how to burn Dang, CDs. LimeWire, that's sick of the way Yeah, back. like some super old, like old, old shit. So um, he was like, yeah, if you let me use your computer, then I'll teach you how to use LimeWire, burn CDs. I like burn CDs and made mixtapes in like mm. middle school. Um, high school, I was promoting parties with him, and then in college, I, it was just like a different atmosphere from what I grew up in in Delaware. And then going to school, it was just like, it's like shit is whack as fuck. And I was like, I'm just gonna, you know, do my own thing. So, so not only are you a DJ, you're an entrepreneur, and you manage mafia management. How do you find a balance between being all three and having a personal life? I mean, honestly, they go hand in hand because Fair. the two people that I manage, they're also like my partners, like at home I and saw. then creatively. Um, so it's kind of easy to maintain it. And um, what I was doing like in my professional career with beer, it went hand in hand with uh, what I was doing in the music industry because like a lot of the venues I had already DJed at or maybe like bartended or served. Um, so there was already like a background. And um, from there, like, yeah, they just go hand in hand. So putting in my personal life, my professional life, and then my creative life, um, they all complement each other for real, so. You're kind of like stepping out of the box. You're not just super girly girl, like you're on that tomboy <laughs> mentality, like you drink beer, you DJ, you manage these artists, like, oh my gosh. Shout I'm out excited. to uh, DC more. Brown. If I had my Oh, I think you left this over there. Dang. I saw it, I should have brought I it, I'm one, so sorry. I wish I had one, because I just pass one over to me real quick. But yeah, I want to learn more about your, we were talking about earlier before we, did all this about your beer. I thought it was a beer company, but explain to me what you do with beer and vibes. Okay, so um, I have my own brand called Brews and Views, and Brews it's and an views. informative and creative platform that okay. influences beer culture amongst millennials of color. Mm. Um, so pretty much like working in the beer industry, uh, beer uh, breweries, the mainstream domestic brands do not advertise towards black people, people of color. They don't Obviously, believe that we yeah. drink beer. Um, so at first it was like a, a, a women's only thing where I wanted to just be an advocate for women oh. drinking beer, but then I realized that like there's a bunch of millennials and a lot of people that really don't know the history of beer, not mm -hmm. understanding that beer is actually an Egyptian made thing mm. that's dated back years. You know, yeah, the Egyptians were the first to make beer. 
didn't um, actually know that. Yeah, so in in the way that it's supposed to be made naturally is just so much better than today. And just on a mainstream pers um, perspective, um, just like if you live in the city, like would you rather go pay like $15 for a Hennessy or $8 for a Corona, you know? so. It's just getting the bang for your buck, educating people, um, especially curators, if they wanna do shows. This is how you should implement a business plan in order for you to make money for the venue, for the staff, for the curator, and for the artists. So you need drink menus, beer specials, like food specials, all those things have to incorporate in order for everybody to monetize profit. So it's pretty dope, so it's a happy hour, but educated. Exactly. Everyone, I love it. Everybody needs to make money. Yes. So that's the main thing is just, you know, cause I feel like a lot of people in this area, they're like, oh, this uh, venue is racist or mm. they don't want this kind of music in here. Oh, we had a great show, we had a good turnout. It was probably a good turnout for you, but it may have not been a good turnout for the venue, you know? So you can have a sold out show, but if they're not buying drinks, if they're not tipping, you know, if they're not being mindful of the venue and the reason that in order to sustain you know, this this business relationship, we have to have these like meetings of, of relationship, so. Man, that's actually really dope. But outside of beer, like let's talk more about your DJ. Like you established like how you got started. It was like 2015, so you decided you came from Dover. You're like, all right, Dover, I'm done with you. Coming to the DMV, I'm about to bring some, kick some flavor in your ear kind of thing and shake things up. So who have you worked with? You know, like when did you finally realize that Oh, ish. I don't know if I can cuss. Oh, ish. I can make money off of this. Hey, I arrived. Um, it's really crazy though because like I left Dover when I was like 18 for college, oh, and really? then I went to college in North and Carolina. And I went to college out there in Delaware too. I went to Wilmington. I went Shout to Goldie Beacon College. Goldie Beacon is fire. I know yes. a lot of people that went to Goldie Beacon. Business school, man. Yeah, really good school. Freaking dope. I had um, a full ride. That's what's up. I had a full ride to college for um, cross country. Yeah, so I left Delaware when I was 18, went to school in North Carolina, went to South by Southwest 2015, Dang. and saw probably like one or two female DJs for real. Um, and I was just like, man, like I can really do this, like maybe I should do this. And then I um, was living in Virginia Beach, but then I called my mom and I was just like, yo, is there like a Buffalo Wild Wings near you? Because that's where I was working at the time. Mm -hmm. And I transferred to Buffalo Wild Wings and Bowie on MLK. Mm. Um, yo. Great times, great money, and I have to pay, like, give respect to Buffalo Wild Wings because that's literally why I'm the DJ. Wait, wait, let, I gotta stop you. Did you? Okay. Was that the first Buffalo Wild Wings you came from from Delaware? Was it? No, it, so I was in Virginia Beach first. Oh. And then I okay. transferred so you to. You got a little taste. Yeah, and okay. I transferred to that one, but like I didn't realize that you know with Redskin Stadium. Well, I'm sorry, Wilmington Football Stadium. Uh, Washingtonian. I'm sorry. Um, football Wilmington. team. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, this said Wilmington because you went to school. I'm right. sorry, Washington Football. Um, they're in Landover. So, you know, a lot of people come to that Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm -hmm. And then I was like an advocate for being like this DJ without social media. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have an Instagram. I didn't have Instagram for like four or five years, maybe. And then people were like, That's you dope. need an you Instagram. You were a mystery. You were like her. No, seriously. I was literally a word of mouth DJ. So like okay. people would hit my phone off of saying, hey, I was a Buffalo Wild Wings. And somebody said they need a DJ. Or I would tell my guests like, this is not just what I do is serve, you know? So that's exactly how I got like a lot of my gigs. And my coworker, Jason, J Flo, he put me onto like my very first gig at the Fillmore and we opened up for Davies. So like that was like the start nice. of it. And that was like 2015, so. So let me ask you this, like, what do you think, what is a major difference between modern DJing and vinyl DJing? And do you feel like with modern DJing that having that vinyl skill, it's kind of lost some touch with that, but I'll let you so how I feel is that and what I'm what I'm learning as well is that there are so many different styles of DJing and I feel as though they all need to be respected because everybody can do their own thing you know so as a disc jockey whether it's CDJs on a you know a, a board or a controller or if it's vinyl you know um, just pay respect to your craft and what you do so of course you have to pay respect to your day ones and how DJ even came about which is vinyl records and scratching um, because I feel as though that's definitely when you know gain the momentum for DJing mm -hmm. but at the same time innovatively like I feel like there's so many different DJs and they mm -hmm. do so many different things and I respect that and I think that's the best thing because for me it was 
going to school and like going to these parties and mm -hmm. it's reggae, then it's go-go, then it's R&B, then it's trap, then it's twerk. It's, it's set up in genres. And for me, I'm just like, I don't want to keep going to these parties and keep hearing the same thing. So if you can get stuck in one decade for music, what would it be? Oh my gosh, this is so easy. It'd probably be 2006 to 2009, like hip hop. Like my high school experience, hip -hop, yes. hip hop blog era, yes. um, uh -huh. you know, like that's when I was tapped into like Currency, tapped into Wiz, um, tapped into Stolly, um, Smoke Dizzle, like all yeah. of Jet Life was in there, and Mac yes. Miller, of course, Schoolboy Q and Kendrick, and I don't know if people know like anything about like overly dedicated, like old, old Kendrick, mm. Dom Kennedy, you okay. know, like that was like my ear of music and um, especially like West Coast music. Um, and then, but also too, like growing up in Delaware, I love Meek. You know, we had this like our own thing called swagging. So um, my homeboy Sap, who actually produced Mac Miller's Donald Trump, mm. he produced a lot of like, um, you know, songs that were just like swag inspired. Uh, Meek Mill did a lot of like songs that were along the nature. So yeah, for me, it's just like, you know, I love, you know, where I come from, but at the same time that year, I was just on MySpace, like, oh my God, so much music. Oh my God. <laughs> so you got six years in the game. Mm -hmm. What is some mistakes that you see from up and coming DJs? I think some mistakes up and coming DJs do is like putting themselves in a box or, just saying like, I have to be this type of DJ in order to accomplish, you know, what I do. Cause like for me, um, I know that I have a, well, it seems like an aggressive Twitter presence um, because I'm extremely vocal about what I don't like. And when I feel as though, you know, people say don't speak on certain things, but I feel as though people are doing something wrong and you're in an area where people are just like, it's just like that, like I'm used to it. Well, how do you think you're gonna invoke change if you don't say anything? So for me, it's like I saw progression in my platform off of speaking out on things that I didn't necessarily agree with, even though I'm not from here, you know, from the outside looking in, it's saying that I see the beauty in this and I'm seeing the things that are also wrong, but I want to be an advocate for people that live here and think the same exact way that I do, but have never said anything because they're used to it. You know, so I feel like being a, a DJ or just don't put yourself in a box and don't say that I can't say this, I can't do that, because look at me, like I'm sitting here regardless of, of my views in regards to the radio, in regards to mainstream music, mainstream entertainment, you know, um, progressive content. Like, so that's my thing is, a, is be vocal about what you're passionate about and don't ever try to say, well, I have to be this DJ, I have to be this curator, I have to be this personality in order to be successful, per se. Wow, that just inspires me for real. Inspired, <laughs> you got brews and views, you got DJing. Let's get over to management. So, how did you get over to management? Was it just a natural transition from DJing? Yeah, honestly, um, I was managing this artist first by the name of Master Mold, and we, you know, went through the dynamics. And I'm learning, like, through the pandemic, um, you know, what I'm saying what I should do in regards to management, right. marketing, um, content. Um, it didn't really go as, as we wanted, and I kind of been doing this more with the people that I'm, I live with and that I, you know, do things with creatively. Um, and we are all on the same page in regards to, you know, um, just streaming is just not mm -hmm. it. Um, we, we always are just putting out honest and transparent and very progressive content, um, you know, that can be spread across like medians of like demographics. So, um, and I think just saying like, hey, since we understand this market and we're being successful off the little things that we have done, if we do expand and keep it, you know, the way we are, it could be extremely successful. Um, and I also think that because of COVID, people need to really change their mindset mm -hmm. in regards to industry standards um, and, and how you want your music to get out. Will you pay attention to your 400 followers or will you keep trying to listen to this person saying you need 10,000 followers in order to do this, that, and the third. You know, if you dedicate your time to the people who support you, um, it could give you a lot of, 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 of leverage in the game. Yeah. You know, authentic, organic audience is important. And that's why I love currency, because I feel like that's extremely organic. It's, it's, he is day one fans. And even though he raps about the same things, but it's still, you know, some different. Like he has a passion for cars and he doesn't like girls that wear their toes out. 
and yeah. he smokes a lot of weed. Yes. And now he has a, a son. He's like a family man. Yep. So you know what I'm saying? Who's like those actually are actually from his baby mom is from the DMV, right? That I didn't yeah. know that. Yes, she is. That's what's up. She's a baddie. That's what's up. That's all I know. Yeah. So you know that's why I like artists like that because you see that like organic pro uh, progression and they haven't like switched up or changed up in like any way. So. Oh, wow. Um, How has COVID, like? catapulted your career your mindset did it give you that push and how so it actually did give me a huge push because for me it like changed everything in regards to what i was doing um professionally like mm -hmm. working in the beer industry i was managing for stella and their entire dc market Dope. um and i was you know talking with people from songbird dc9 um u street music hall in regards to any local artists that came in at a show I was gonna come and sponsor with Stella, no questions asked. Like, it, just looking at their calendar and just saying, okay, I know Suri Yu, I know Lucky Sevo, like, I know Brittany Marie, like, I know these people, and I should, you know, come in, you know, because it, people will be familiar. You know, you wanna set that community. So, um, with everything closing, it was just like, okay, you can't really do anything. And I didn't wanna come back to work and do something else that would take away from the relationships that I already built. Um, so that's when I just invested more in the brews and views. And then also too, um, just seeing that people were more, like more active on live, on Instagram, on mm -hmm. Twitter, music wise, and listening to the radio and hearing them say, come, you know, submit your music and we'll play 30 seconds. Like who, who can, can get the gist of a song in 30 seconds? Like how can you really get a vibe off of just an intro, just of like one verse, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think the people need to appreciate bodies of work. And from there I was just like, well, I'm always dropping mixes. I don't really get like a lot of that much attention, but if I do for the DMV mixes, which is what I did, like making mixes for DMV and Baltimore artists only, um, started that and that's what truly inspired me because it, it mm. got amazing feedback. I was able to do tons of shows, I traveled to freaking Atlanta, LA, um, Brooklyn. Um, I was everywhere, like, you know, doing uh, shows with Only Vibe. So um, it definitely inspired me and, and just let me invest all the things that I was learning prior to COVID and put them into my two brands. Right, the and Only and Vibe Bruce is Reviews. located where? In College Park. Okay, in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Dope. Yeah, it's like in the cut somewhere. It's there, right? super in the cut. Bruh, uh, I literally, I love that place, but I, they confused me for you, I swear. They really did. Aww. They really did. Which is flattery, of course. But I was like, bro, get off my line. I don't know who you are. You will know when I come in. It's so building. funny that you told me that. I didn't even know that. Yeah, we, we, yeah, you know. I was just like, I thought about that. We kind of do look a little sober now that a we're little. finally sitting in front of each other. It's kind of like, whoa, twin vibes. Crazy. <laughs> but um, what is like the, okay, if you could just look into the camera and say, what is something, what's some advice that you can give to somebody who's maybe struggling with their creativity? Like whether it's DJing or being an entrepreneur, how can you tell them to keep on going? What I would say to artists in order to keep going is just trust in yourself and invest in yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, you won't progress in anything unless you invest in you. So take what you love, take what you admire, take what you're passionate about and invest that in yourself. And then that will attract and gravitate towards others who are like-minded and will invest in you and reciprocate that energy to back. And this moment was brought to you by V8 Juice. Put good in, get good out. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wrap it up on like a really funny moment. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, DJ no, Bring Mafia, you. for coming in and bringing your entrepreneur DJ and dopeness to my show. You made my night. No, and plus, pleasure was mine. Oh my gosh, girl. Thank pleasure you so was much. All mine. Thank you so much. And for everybody out there, from just seeing these awesome people, I want you all to remember that you have the power to be able to be anybody that you want to be. Start by making sure that the people around you actually think you're dope. Because if you aren't, or if they don't think you're dope, they don't deserve <laughs> to be in any space with you at any Bye. given point. And if you're ever thinking about moving, make that move, make that decision because you are creative. So creatives out there, create on. And yes, thank you Brie for coming through. No, Brie thank you Marie OG, for having follow me. Follow her, thank Brie you. OG on Instagram, Bandcamp. Check out her artist, Trill K, right? I got it right? Or it's DJ Brie Mafia on Instagram. I know, it's I'm OG talking about Brie on Twitter. for your artist. Oh, for, wait, wow. for Trilla? Your artist! 
Oh, Trilla K? Yeah, oh, I Trilla said it right. Kay. Okay, I just wanted that confirmation that I said it right. Thank you so much for coming in. And we're going to get into these performances. So stay tuned next week. Go! <laughs> 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 Thank you.